Hello students, in today's lecture, we are going to study about the emission of spectroscopy principle in detail. For this, there are a few things that we need to learn. The first thing we need to learn is what exactly is spectroscopy and what is the spectroscopy principle. Let us get in depth to it. So over here they have just shown a steel sample, they have shown an electrode and you can see an optical spectroscopy happening over here. Optical emission spectroscopy involves applying electrical energy in the form of spark generated between an electrode and a metal sample whereby the vaporized atoms are brought to a high energy state within a so-called discharge plasma. Spectroscopy is something which happens when you put it into a different state, when we want to do it on our own. There are various kinds of emissions and there are various kinds of spectroscopies which are happening on their own naturally. That means under natural phenomena. But if the human beings want to conduct the same or go through the similar phenomena, then they have to make sure that there is some kind of discharge plasma state which is nothing but a high energy state. So they have to make sure that high amount of energy is given and that particular state is attained for the entire atoms to get vaporized. So how do we achieve that? We achieve that by applying electrical energy in front of an electrode and a metal sample. This leads to an electrical discharge and this particular electrical discharge makes sure that the atoms get vaporized and there is an emission spectroscopy which takes place. Spectral lines. These excited atoms and ions in the discharge plasma create a unique emission spectrum specific to each element as shown at right. Now what are we actually talking about over here is we are talking about spectral lines. So if you look over here there is a picture. In the picture you can see a black background but on that particular black background there are white lines. These particular white lines are known as spectral lines. Now what are spectral lines? Spectral lines are made up of excited atoms and ions. So they consist of excited atoms and excited ions. And these atoms and ions, now where do we consider getting these atoms and ions? How do we create them? We create them by getting them into a discharge plasma state. So this, this particular discharge plasma state is responsible for getting spectral lines which are made up of excited atoms or ions. So now whenever you get into the discharge plasma state, they create unique emission spectrum which is specific to each element. So now it is important for us to remember that this particular emission spectrum will be different for different elements. It is not such that all the elements will have the same kind of spectral lines. The spectral lines differ from element to element. One such element is shown over here in the figure and you can see in that particular picture that there are white spectral lines on a black background image. Thus a single element generates numerous characteristic emission spectral lines. So on a single element, only on one element, we can actually create many spectral lines. Therefore, the light generated by the discharge can be said to be a collection of the spectral lines generated by the elements in that sample. So now whenever the light is generated because of the discharge or by the discharge, we can say that that particular light is nothing but collection of the spectral lines. Why? Because the discharge itself does not give out light. The discharge gives out spectral lines. And because of the spectral lines, we get a feeling that a line is being generated. And that is the reason why 
that particular spectral lines or those particular spectral lines are considered to be giving out light. The light is split by a diffraction grating to extract the emission spectrum for the target element. Now what are we supposed to do over here? The light is split by a diffraction grating. Now diffraction grating is nothing but a mechanism and in this particular diffraction grating mechanism what do we do is we extract the emission spectrum for the particular target element. So whichever element we intend to have that particular element will be extracted with a mechanism known as diffraction grating. The intensity of each emission spectrum depends upon the concentration of elements in that spectrum. So now it actually depends on how many atoms are there. How many elements are there? If the atoms or elements are concentrated or they are not in a good a lot of amount. All of these points are very important. The intensity of the emission, whether the emission will be very intense, whether the light which is coming out will be very intense or very light, it actually depends upon the concentration of the elements in that particular sample whether the elements are a lot or the elements are quite little detectors now there are certain detectors over here they have taken an example of photo multiplier tubes apart from photo multiplier tubes also there are various kinds of detectors available and these detectors measure the presence or absence of the spectrum extracted for each element that means once the entire discharge process takes place after that there are certain detectors and these detectors measure the presence now of what will they measure the presence they measure the presence of a spectrum of a particular element so for example let us take element gold so if i have a jewelry and I want to make sure that the jewelry contains gold. Then what will I do? I will create a discharge plasma and I will let the emission process begin. If the emission process begins, what will we do? We will take detectors. Over here they have taken the example of a photomultiplier tube. So then they will take photomultiplier tube and in that photomultiplier tube they will see whether the gold spectrum is present or absent. If it is present, then they will also check the concentration of it. How concentrated is it? So from that we come to know whether a particular jewelry is proper real jewelry or it is fake. How do we come to know whether the gold spectrum is there, then it is real jewelry. If the gold spectrum is not there, then it is fake jewelry. Even if the gold spectrum is there but it is present in minimum amounts, then also we can get to know the quality of the jewelry. So over here, they are showing a monochromator. There is diffraction grating. So in the first place, we are actually creating a discharge plasma. That discharge plasma emits a spectrum. That spectrum is passed through a diffraction grating. After a diffraction grating, whatever the emission is there passes through the photomultiplier tubes and through the tubes we come to know which particular element is present and which particular element is not present. Even if a particular element is present, how much proportion or how much quantity of it is present is also extremely important. So all these are basic points. In the broader sense, optical emission spectrometer includes ICP optical emission spectrometry, which uses an inductively coupled plasma as the excitation source. So if we have a broader sense of it, if we are looking at the bigger picture of it, of how the entire thing takes place, we do optical emission spectrometry and that includes ICP optical emission and in that ICP optical emission spectrometry it uses a inductive coupled plasma 
before this we were doing discharge plasma but now we are doing inductive coupled plasma icp and that particular thing is used as a excitation source the term optical emission spectrometry and photoelectric optical emission spectrometry however generally refer to optical emission spectrometry using spark discharge so either you use the word optical emission spectrometry or you use the term photoelectric optical emission spectrometry both of them refer to optical emission spectrometry itself and over there what do they refer to what is the main thing the main thing is using spark discharge direct current arc discharge so instead of spark discharge what other things can we have we can have a direct current arc discharge or glow discharge as well for generating excitation discharges so where we studied emission of spectrometry we studied the entire principle we also studied what is optical emission spectrometry and the photoelectric effect of it and how the entire process takes place it is important for us to understand the different detectors as well over here the example was photo multiplier tube and we also saw use of it of how it is important and how it helps us in detecting metals thank you